Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstow Group. This was an absolutely crazy week. Michael and I had a lot of fun on Wednesday. I mean, it was nutty uh, around here with stories. We also released some of uh, the podcast from uh, Nate. <clears throat> Excuse me. We had uh, Rachel Collins. And we had uh, also uh, Matt Shoemaker. He's the one that's uh, challenging uh, AOC and uh, everything else. We also had um, a couple others uh, that went out. We've got 32 between David Blackman, uh, myself, and R.T. Trevino. And also working and getting Chris Wright from uh, Inter- uh, Liberty uh, Energy and Doomberg on one podcast. We're going to look uh, to record here real quick. So uh, with that, buckle up and enjoy the Saturday, the 17th. Have an absolutely wonderful weekend. Buckle up and the staff is putting together the big stories of the week. Have a great day. We will see you guys soon. Hey, let's start with our buddy over there, Biden. Biden will earmark millions of acres of public land for solar development. You know, where, Michael, where did the ESG, where did the environment, social, and governance disappear to? Because now it's okay to wipe out millions of acres for this under the new guidance the blm the bureau of land management not the other blm will earmark broad pockets of land across the west for potential solar development uh 22 million acres is accepting bulk comments i got one bulk comment from the farmers in a truck and dropping it on their bulk comment section. This is despicable. Yeah. I think if you, if, if, if Miss producer can come up and throw this picture up, it's, it's a a screenshot of the Western half of the United States. You can see everywhere highlighted in green is the, is, is part of that 22 million acres that we're talking about. You see some of the other color. I mean, you're basically talking about, all of Nevada between what the red and and green is. You're basically right. talking about the entire western half of Arizona, lots of New Mexico. There's even some in Colorado, which we'll get to in a bit. Wyoming's going to have a lot. I mean, basically, you're t- you're you're yeah. taking off huge swaths of all of these different states. And for how much power generation? You're not going to be able to power even the entire West Coast with and, that. And it's the grid takeaway, Michael. It's mm-hmm. the storage. We're talking a balloon doggle. I mean, this is like a horrific mess that is not properly even thought out. And and what I want to know is, and and this article doesn't do a good job of saying this, how did they come to the determination where they're going to put this? My hope is they're starting with places where nobody lives anyway. Because the worst part is if you're now, if all of a sudden you're going to start having to do eminent domain and things of that sort to take away people's land to do this, it's going to get absolutely crazy out there. So I'm hopeful that they're at least going to, and this 22 million acres is hopefully either already federally owned or they're not coming in and like wiping out people's you know land, but they will. It doesn't matter if it's federally owned or not. Here's the thing. I have rappelled into the Grand Canyon. I've hiked 30 miles down. I've hung off of these things. I'm a big outdoor fan. I want to be out there. You throw in what we did to West Texas with those $3.5 billion worth of uh, damage coming across to the plains. You start putting that in the beautiful mountains out there or the beautiful desert, you're going to kill animals and wildlife, and you're going to even do even more. Where's the Sahara Club? Where is Greenpeace? Where are all these ecological folks that are supposed to be upset about uh, taking care of Mother Earth? Where are they? This is despicable. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be extremely interesting. And I mean, I think this last part is hilarious. So they've identified 22 million acres. But then what they're claiming, the BLM, in partnership with NREL, which is a, 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 another Colorado-based energy laboratory. I've, I've, I've done some good work. They, they do good work, but th- this stat absolutely blows my mind. 
They're claiming that only 700,000 acres of that 8 to 55 million guidance, where that 22 million is the center of acres, is available for solar products will need to be developed to hit the Biden targets administration of meeting, reaching 100% carbon-free energy sector by 2030. That, why would you earmark 50? So then what do they do? Why do you need 55 million then? If you only need 700,000 acres for the development of 100% clean electric grid by 2030, why are you earmarking 22 million? So that tells me one of two things. They just want the land. It's a massive land grab and a takeover. Or they're just lying about this study. One of the two has to be right. Both. It's probably, of course. Uh, of, it's a remember, that's they're only enough to, to power, if you read the next sentence, it's only enough to power 515,000 homes. Oh, sweet. So not even everybody in doubts. No. Uh, this is a land grab is what it is. You identified it correctly. Sometimes a blind mice finds cheese once in a while. It's going to Colorado. Colorado legislators push bill to end oil well drilling by 2030. The industry is preparing for its biggest political fight yet in the state. Michael, I don't know how to even start with this one. I love Colorado. Both my kids were born there. Absolutely love the state. Everybody fleeing from Colorado, uh, from California, have destroyed the sanity yep. in that state. Let's go through some of this. You and I uh, were able to help PDC really uh, get their first uh, wells drilled with uh, some of your outstanding post SB 181. Not yes. drilling. We were, we, of being continuing to become more frosty to oil and gas. I mean, and basically what they've done now is they've gone ahead and they've, you know, submitted articles to 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 be put on the ballot to stop oil and gas drilling by 2030. Basically, they're going to be revoking the and they're going to do this by revoking the ability to permit new wells. This draft language um according to Denver Business Journal has been discussed with both leaders on the environmental side and um, within the state legislator, and we expect to see a bill submitted within the next month. So according to the draft of the bill that was seen by the Denver Business Journal, it would basically tell the Colorado Energy and Carbon Management Co Commission, that state agency that regulates oil and, um, um, and well production. It used to be the COGCC. They've now shifted it up a little bit because they got to throw in carbon management. Absolutely crazy. They're basically going to tell them to stop issuing new permits um, for wells by January 1st, 2030. That basically, so it, it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game. Um you would still be able to permit wells in that six year time frame, but you would have to drill them by 2033 or risk that permit expiring. So are they shutting it down completely? No. So what this really is, is absolutely is just a, uh, a it's carrot stick for for all of the environmentalists out there that are that are again giving them money you look at where the money's coming from what's as, as Stu said everybody from california has come in and just ruined what used to be the greatest state in america in my opinion i'm i so uh i agree you know yeah absolutely uh, yeah now here's the thing uh there's forty eight thousand active wells and 57 uh 50, 000 inactive plugged wells uh, the wells are on track to produce 165 million barrels of oil and much larger amounts of natural gas. If the good citizens of Colorado would like to be turned into New York or California, vote for this. If you want your kilowatt per hour to go to two or three times, if you want to pay $4,000 a month for your electric bill, knock yourself out. When you move to Texas, leave your voting there in Colorado like the uh, locust destroying fields and then moving on. Yeah, and I mean, Colorado is sneakily the fourth largest crude oil producer in the United States. You wouldn't guess that, really. You know, you've got your Texas, your Oklahomas, your New Mexicos, your blah, blah, blah. They're above Oklahoma. We produce more. It, you know, you talk about it goes Texas, North Dakota, New Mexico, Colorado. Not for long. It could be doing Not a lot Not for long, more. but. No, it could be doing a lot more. And the sad part is 
the oil and gas companies in Colorado are outstanding yes. eco-friendly folks. They love the mountains just as much as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's about physics and they just don't want to hear it. Yeah. That anyway, this story good. just makes me sad. I'm going to go curl up in the corner. <laughs> So let's roll over here to our second favorite state for entertainment, New York State. New York State proposes a rapid act and other bill to aid in transition from renewable energy and away from natural gas. Uh, Governor uh, Kathy Hochul is entertainment at its finest. Uh, the executive budget proposal, the Transportation, Economic Development, and Environmental Conservation Budget includes two pivotal uh, energy proposals. The renewable action uh, through project interconnection and the Deployment Act and the Affordable Gas Transi Transition Act. <laughs> um, the AGTA, the Affordable Gas Transition Act, is uh, looking to ban natural gas and go to all renewables. Specifically, the ATG, uh, AGTA would include the achievement of the state's CLCPA goal within the state's gas, electric, and uh, steam service policy to eliminate the 100-foot rule ending the practice of having utilities fund new gas hookups out of its rate base rather than charging the individual customer and revisit the obligation to serve customers who seek new gas hookups. This is just amazing that they are stepping in to eliminating the lowest cost uh, energy with the lowest impact on the environment and removing this from a choice from consumers. They could be saving so much money and having a better impact on the environment. Governor Hochul, if you and or anyone out of uh, your government or your administration would like to come on the podcast, I would love to visit with you and any of your representatives and you and you get the details of what you're thinking about this as I'm not sure that the thought process of actual CO2 output, how much it's going to save versus how much it's going to cost the tank taxpayers and that this is going to bankrupt New York. I love New York state, but it just seems like uh, bad management is going on here. I'd love to have you on the podcast and uh, visit with you. Furbo Energy Drilling, as a result, show rapid advancement of geothermal performance. This is pretty cool. Furbo uh, Cape Station to show 70% year-over-year reduction in drilling times and pave the way for rapid geothermal deployment. I love geothermal as a renewable type energy, and I love what this article is talking about. Uh, Tim Latimer is the CEO. Quote, since its inception, Fervo has looked to bring a manufacturing mentality to enhance geothermal development, building a highly a uh, repeatable drilling process that allows for continuous improvement and show as a result, lower cost, said Tim Latimer. Um, in six months, we've proven that our technology solutions have led to a dramatic acceleration in forecasting uh, uh, drilling performance. And when you sit back and take a look, um, the our great EMP operators have the ability, the knowledge, uh, the uh, the wherewithal to get good drilling done at very very good costs. And when you marry geothermal uh, power and our great EMP operators, you get a fantastic home run uh, running down the road for geothermal. All about it. And I think this is, uh, says a lot of um, fantastic things uh, for our um, renewable and oil and gas running down the road together.
So hats off to Vervo uh, Energy. So let's go to NDP, anti-fossil fuel advertising draft legislation worthy of both the 1956 Soviet RSFSR criminal code or the other end of the political spectrum. Uh, Terry, I affectionately call you grumpy and uh, you went all out on this story. The CIA, bless their hearts, translated the 1956 Soviet RSFSR criminal code, which is the uh, Yulgani Codex, if you run in the circles. Um, this is pretty funny. It is uh, Charlie Angus's bill C-372, an act respective to fossil fuel advertising. And um, they're looking to cut the advertising. And if you speak negatively, excuse me, positively about this is just nuts. It is prohibited for a person to promote fossil fuel or the production of fossil fuel in a manner that states or suggests that fossil fuel or the practices of a producer or of the fossil fuel industry would lead to positive outcomes in relation to the environment, health, Canadians, and reconciliation of the indigenous people or the Canadian go, go, global economy. Holy smokes, Batman, you can't buy this kind of entertainment. We have to deal in sustainability. Sustainability is low-cost energy that you don't have to print money. Uh, the only reason that the world is uh, reducing their carbon is getting off of coal, like in the United States, uh, cutting 22% of their carbon output. Why? They did reduce their coal plants, but the EIA for two years in a row stated that it was because of the increase in natural gas plants. So I would be just now arrested uh, for being able to say that the EIA, the U.S. government, uh, said that it was a good thing for us to lower our carbon output by using natural gas. This is a terrible way for the uh, Canadian government to just flat go way off the deep end as far as I can. And uh, Terry... God bless you for bringing this up. Uh, please follow, reach out and uh, follow uh, Terry at the BOE and buy his book. Uh, it is um, Ending the Fossil Fuel Insanity. I think you need to write a whole new chapter here, Terry. Do municipality politicians actually know where electricity comes from? <laughs> I answered it in the open. No, <laughs> no. Um, okay, let's go to the next article. No, uh, ISO data for yesterday's disclosed those I industrial wind turbines delivered uh, almost five megawatts over 24 hours or a misery, uh 4.2% of their rated capacity, even though they get first to the grid rights. This is nuts. The, everybody thinks that they're going to put in uh, 42 megawatts, but it's a, that's a nameplate. You're only going to get 4% of that, mm -hmm. which is, you know, the way you get to pay for that. Yep. Anyway. So when you sit back and take a look at this article, I thought it was pretty fun based on what's happening around the world. This is in Canada. When you're making rules, Michael, there's nobody that reads the bills anymore. And in uh, your local ones, there, there's now a groundswell of people wanting to stop um, uh, renewables from being in their backyard. It's the NIMBYs. So uh, the politicians adopting the natural gas phase out would be capable of understanding without those plants. Ontario would have experienced rolling blackouts that California is famous for. So people that legislators in California, in Canada and the U S are making decisions based on religion rather than facts. 
Well, it's a lot of what this 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 stuff is, and and what's unfortunate is that your local munis- municipality has a lot of control over you. It's some it's it's sometimes even more than the federal government because they're here now. Of course, it's Canada. We have to point out this is we're talking about Canada, who's gone a little overboard with some of this stuff. But I mean, it, again, it just goes to show you. Um, it's that I think it's a wonderful in the in the inclusion, Michael. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. The the time. Well, yeah, I did. I just can. Uh, the time that has come to push all elected politicians to stop the insane effort to decarbonize our economy and return to sanity, unless their objective is to drive us all into energy poverty and move us back to cave dwelling days. <laughs> My kind of article. <laughs> great article. We appreciate it. What's next article? Michael plays right into today's th- uh, energy thread. 70% of the consumers are unwilling to spend more on energy subsidies. Uh, this survey says, mm-hmm. and the survey says, um, Greg Guthridge, not Greg Gutfeld. Uh, I've invited him to be on the podcast as well, too, but I know he's a little busy. Um, The survey highlights Gutridge added 70% of the outcomes of the energy transition depend on people changing their energy consumption behaviors and lifestyles, but consumer fatigue is setting in stalling confidence in stagnating process. People are not their NIMBYs. They're not going to do it in their backyard and then give up your cell phone. No. Give up your tri- traveling anywhere you want, anywhere you time. Nope. Uh, turn your heat up. Turn your heat down. Nope. Yeah. No. I mean, I I think what's funny is there's there's a lot of good stuff that was woven into this EY article, um, but I I think you know people are not willing. They, they, they want to spend less. People are used to spending less over time and things right. getting better over time. Think about anything else in America. I mean, think about your phone. Think about your car. You've been able to spend less over time, and right. the efficiency or the product has improved. Except phones. People have yeah. accepted that phones were at a hundred bucks, and now everybody's getting expecting these thousand dollar phones. And Apple has done a great job increasing the price. Yeah, I mean, I, I, but on a, but on a massive scale, the price of things have gone down over time, and I mean that's the free market at work. Obviously, we've got inflation right now, but, but no, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily. Again, I'm not driving an EV, so I'm not, you know, I'm, and, and you're not going to see me. Your F one hundred and fifty is anything but an EV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to go get. It. Hey, I'm in Texas now. I, I'm getting my car re-registered in Texas now this year, and you don't have to get an emissions test. That's wow. something in Colorado you have to do. Wow. But you have to That's get a vehicle amazing. inspection, so I don't know what's worse. Well, cough twice. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.